Hello, my name is Jesper and I'm the author behind this book. Uh, and I will read another chapter today. It's from the second story. It's called The Lucky Ukrainian. Uh, and I hope a part of you want to follow me and buy my books. <coughs> so, let's start. The Lucky Ukrainian. Chapter 1. Family. My family has always been lucky. Or to be more precise, the youngest in the family was lucky. My grandmother survived the Holodomor in 1922 because she was the youngest in her family. She had been visiting family in Budapest just after her 10th birthday when they were told of the starvation. The rest of my family died in Sterling's famine. She was married and moved back home to our family home. Dad grew up without a dad because he was his dad was killed in a tractor accident when dad was young. When the war came, he joined and survived the Second World War as a soldier. His greatest feat was when he went into a bunker filled with Germans and with a single gun killed nearly 20 soldiers. One German soldier emptied his machine pistol from less than 10 meters away and missed all the shots. A Stuka dive bomber flying behind enemy lines killed the rest of his family. My dad becomes, became semi-famous, but never cared about politics before he met my mother. She was young and liked the, liked the ideas from one of the small parties opposing the communists in Ukraine. He joined the party and became a helper just to flirt with my mother. I was born in the spring of 1958 and grew up in Pyvyat, a small Ukrainian town at the time. When I was just about to turn 10, my dad went to an event with my mother. At the rally, they needed a speaker and <coughs> At the rally, they needed a speaker, and, him, and he was forced to talk about his experience in the war. He was a natural speaker and got applauded from the crowd. It was in the spring of 60, uh, 68, just five more months before the tanks drove into Prague. My dad was not in Prague when the tanks rolled in and suppressed that freedom movement. He was at home with me on the outskirts of Kiev, listening to the English radio while I was having my 10 years old birthday. Just the family for a fun evening before the sun goes down. It was the night grandma it was the night grandmother told us about the Holdemore and the family luck. The next weekend I was having my first sleepover with my best friend Jeremy. His mother was the English teacher at our school. She was born, raised and educated in England. We just played cards, had fun and went to bed, all while speaking English. As the sun hit the houses in our little village, the next morning the news started to spread like wildfire. The KGB had gone through and arrested any associated with the other parties under the cover of darkness. They thought my mom and dad were some of the top people in one of the parties and could point to the speech given by my dad. The KGB had spies at all the rallies. My parents had been killed in the street because they tried to 
resist arrest. My grandmother was arrested and tortured. They wanted to know where the children of the family had gone. Anybody under torture would speak. She said gone to English just before she died. But they never understood it and thought I had gone to England. The English family took me in and I started to speak, speak English like I had been born in England. My new mother lost her husband in the workers' strike and decided to go back to her family in England. In England she found a new boyfriend who was a fighter pilot. Two teenage boys who loved speed, machines and machines got introduced to jet, of jet fighters. Short story, we became laser focused on becoming fighter pilots. Jeremy and I both joined the first class of the class of 78. Few things in li my life compare to the first time you got to pilot your own jet fighter. Okay, the first 10 times I had a trainer in the Phantom 2. And it took me three, three weeks longer than Jeremy to start flying alone. The jet fighter community was small at that time. And I was either lucky or cursed to become a trainer. I trained with the Americans and they never knew I was Ukrainian from birth. I was even twice invited to Myanmar, both to teach and be taught. That was about two years before they made that movie called Top Gun. When the Russians started fighting a proxy war with the Americans in Afghanistan in the mid 80s, the Americans searched for guys that could understand Russian. And although it had been 15 years, I started to help from England. The language was the language of my enemy and I had not spoken it in 50 ye 15 years, but it was still there, tucked away in my childhood memory. Later I was transferred to, Amer to the Americans and helped them translate the Russian chatter nearly in real time. After the Russians pulled out of Afghanistan, I was reassigned as an assistant instructor at NASA. They were starting to work with the different groups around the world on the project that would become the ISS. Being a fighter pilot and training astronauts who were largely fighter pilots had helped a lot. I also trained to become a Russian. <coughs> I also trained to become a space pilot myself. It was easy for me to speak Russian with the Russian astronauts because I had done it as a child. That was the first chapter in the story called The Lucky Ukrainian. I got a family from Ukrainian, so but I can't pronounce most of the words. Sorry.